The Clarkston Wolves, coached by Kurt Richardson, are ranked number three in Class AA. Dane Fife, junior quarterback, leads the county in passing yards with 788 in just four games. Completing 60% of his passes with eight touchdowns and three interceptions. The ground game is led by Brad Phelan with 503 yards on 91 carries. This offensive unit can strike through the air or pound the ground, humiliating any defensive scheme at his face. The Waterford Kettering captains have struggled this year. Quarterback Tim Morris has thrown nine interceptions, and the rushing game has been ground to a halt. Coach Mike Berry always has his team prepared for the big game. Are the Clarkston Wolves ripe for the upset? We'll find out tonight. Let's send it down to Roy Akers for his pregame report on tonight's ball game. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, we're in week five of our prep season, as right now, as you have on tap, the Waterford Kettering Captains and the Clarkston Wolves. So far this year, the Captains, they are one and three, and they've started off very sluggish. They're very inconsistent so far this year, and they take on the high-power Clarkston Wolves. The Wolves this year, depending on who you listen to, depending on which poll you read and which newspaper, are ranked between third and seventh in the entire state of Michigan, only the third-best team, though, in Oakland County. Who's Clarkston paced by? Well, who else but Dan Fife of the Fife family. Dan Fife this year is passing for great yardage, and the Clarkston Wolves are just running the football and are using a balanced attack as they have a good dynamic duo of Jason Frack and Brad Conley out here. Frack is one of the leading receivers in Oakland County, catching 17 balls in four weeks of prep action. Dane Fife is over 60% passing so far here for the Clarkston Wolves. This Wolves team, they might even have a better team this year than they're going to have next year. The reason why I say that is they have mostly seniors at the skill positions, especially along the line and at wide receiver. But the running backs and, of course, Dane Fife, they're all underclassmen. So that's something to take a look at this year. So if Clarkson's going to go all the way, well, that makes make some damage in the playoffs. This would be a good year for them to take a look at it. The other thing about the Clarkston Wolves, they only have two two-way players on their entire roster, and what that means is that Coach Kurt Richardson and the rest of his troops, he's going to be able to funnel in new uh, players on both sides of the line in uh, 18 of the 22 positions here tonight. For the Kettering captains, well, this year, taking a look, they have not been able to consistently move the ball on the ground or in the air. Their uh, quarterback so far this year, Mr. Morris, he had two passes picked off almost right out of his hands against Pontiac Northern last week, and he's going to need to have some time to throw here tonight. Clarkson only has a three-man front, and it looks like the captains, as long, depending on what type of pressure the uh, Wolves throw at Mr. Morris, maybe he'll be able to throw the football. Maybe the captains will be able to run the ball a little bit better so far uh, than they did against Pontiac Northern, whose quickness just superiorly out-muscled out them there a couple of weeks ago. The captains... Their defensive side of the football is a big question mark tonight because six of the 11 players that we had against Pontiac Northern are not starting tonight. While the captains have the same secondary and the two inside linebackers are the same, the front four is different and so are their outside linebackers. So here to recap, here's the key. Can the captains get pressure on Dane Fife and kind of thwart this balance attack that the Clarkston Wolves have? And for the Wolves, is that three-man pressure going to be enough against the captains? A lot of people think Clarkston's going to win on a route tonight, but it's really all going to depend on who can execute better, whether it be the Wolves or the captains, and that's what we're going to find out. Right now, back up to the tower in Comcast Sports. This is Roy Akers. Bob? Pizza. Go to Michigan's Best Pizza by the Michigan Restaurant Association. Call and order one of Dolly's seven delicious specialty pizzas, like the Mesquite Grilled Chicken Parmesan Pizza. Get a large round or square pizza for just $9.99. Check your mail for more Dolly's Pizza specials. At Dolly's Pizza, we know what you like. At Dolly's Pizza, we know what you like. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Comcast TV 45 Sports. I'm Bob Montgomery, along with Roy Akers in the broadcast booth, and we bring you an OAA division, crosstown, uh, cross division there matchup, uh, Division One, Division Two. We're halfway into this 1996 prep season, Roy, and uh, the Clarkston Wolves, we talked about it early on in the broadcast that we had here. I felt that they were a better team than Troy. We're going to find out later in the month when those two teams hook up. But tonight, the Clarkston Wolves have a team, the Waterford Kettering Captains, not one of their best seasons so far this year. And uh, maybe they're ready and uh, pull an upset here tonight. 
Well, for their sake, uh, the captains are going to need to play their best ball game and probably hope for a few breaks. Hope that Mr. Fife is off his game a little bit. The captains, as we talked about in the pregame show, they're actually they haven't really been able to do anything well offensively. I, I've liked Newingham at the wide receiver slot. Played a real good game against Willow Kimball in our first televised ball game, but nobody can hang on to the passes and the uh, second ball game that we broadcast against the Huskies last week. The captains will kick off, though, first, as Aaron Quinn will be back here to do that. The deep players back are Phelan and uh, Griddle there for uh, Clarkston, and it's a short little poocher that's going to go to one of the up players. Looks like Underwood, and Underwood's still on his feet and turns the captains around, and it looks like the Wolves will have great starting field position at their own 39-yard line. The Clarkston Wolves will start off tonight. First off, their quarterback, the much-heralded Dane Fife, and fullback Jeff Long. The running back is Brad Phelan. The flanker is Brad Conley. Our split ends tonight, they're rotating, will be Frack and Matt Brown. Our tight end starting will be Anderson. Our right tackle will be Blundy. Right guard is Clement. The center is Guilford. Zavadsky is at guard. Clapton's at left tackle. We'll check the captain's D in a moment. As Clarkson at the far hash mark has Fife look, and he's got pressure and has the ball completed underneath. As this time hauling it in is going to be a new player in there, Mike Matrot. And Matrot's over midfield as David Rushman will make the stop after a pickup of about 13. And already the Wolves go to the air. And I like their patterns. They're like a pro style offense. You got to like this. Well, one of the things you saw there is the poise that Dane Fife possesses back here. Another completed pass, Roy. That's going to pick up another first down, another pickup of 15 yards out there. Yeah, and that's two in a row, right? and this time here to Brad Conley. As once again, the Wolves in the hurry-up offense. I'm looking at my sheet, and I missed the second play. And the captain's got two passes, two first downs, and already Clarkston is on the march from the far hash mark. They have split out here to the near side. They got Maytrap, but it won't matter. They're going to go to the flat the other way as we have another Clarkston first down. As this time, it's a little look-in pass. As this completed, is it to Conley? One of the... Had I'll tell you, Al Duff, the, the assistant uh, defensive coordinator over here, is already calling for a timeout, Roy, because he obviously does not like what he sees so far from uh, the Clarkston Wolves out here. And yeah. I don't know if this is something that they uh, normally show, this hurry-up offense, but those were three pass plays that came to the near, uh, near side of the field over here, and they were just quick one, two, three, drop back and pass play. Yeah, the captains, as you said, have called the timeout here early on. It's three straight completed passes. As already, it's uh, Clarkston three for three as Dane Fife is showing why he's one of the leading passers. Actually, he is the leading passer in Oakland County. He has, at least for yards, he has 788 after four ball games. That's nearly 200 a ball game. Yeah, he's completing it's, almost 60% of his passes on the season, Roy. So really good uh, high percentage. And uh, if they keep passing these uh, little uh, six-yard downfield passes, it's just going to add to that percentage. Yeah, when you get those completed, you can automatically have some good sweep tosses. It keeps the linebackers neutralized and maybe even go downfield once or twice uh, during the course of a drive if, if you need to do that. So Coach Richardson has basically outsmarted the captains here early on as WK did not expect Clarkson to come out here in this uh, no-huddle offense. It was first made very popular on a long-term basis by the Buffalo Bills here earlier this decade. Split on out of the near side, they're going to have Conley. Also, they got Frack, and a running play will go straight up the gut. Not a lot of running room for Jeff Long, as Long will pick up about two yards before he's brought down by Justin Dyer, and that'll now make it second down and nine. Four offensive plays by the Clarkston Wolves. We played only 45 seconds, and that's with the clock running the last 15 seconds or so. So the Wolves are moving the clock. Three first downs already. This time the Wolves have three wideouts put out to the near side. The lone running back is Jeff Long, a fullback. He's got five. He's going to be pressured. He's hammered as he lets it go, but it's complete to Frack, and Frack is going to be wrapped up by five Kettering captains, including Ryan Gerwa, who's just excellent, David Rushman as well. So the pass is complete. Super pressure by the captains, but Fife keeps his poise. He knew he was going to get hit and gets it completed anyway, and it's once again a completed pass underneath. <laughs> Well, talking to John Schemmel, John went over to one of the Clarkston-Berkeley game, and he was impressed by this junior quarterback, Roy, and the poise that he showed back there. He just 
has a lot of patience back there and will look for his receivers downfield. And the Clarkston Wolves, they're gonna have a play action. Fife's rolling out. He's got Frack in the end zone, delivers it too far. And this time the captain's rush busted on through as Dan Rose, who's the two-way player for WK, came out there and chased Fife from the pocket. And Fife really had to just throw that one out of the way in the range of the receiver. And our clock is temporarily stopped with 10-14 to play in the opening quarter. Clarkston has had the ball since our opening kickoff as they've had it for a minute, 44, here of quarter number one, and it's now going to bring it fourth down. So the captains... Uh, well, Clarkston the Wolves will call a timeout. Time I'm out. not sure, Roy, fourth down and four, if uh, they were going to go for it. Looked like they were going to go for it down here on their own uh, nine-yard line, Roy, but uh, I probably would have uh, kicked the field goal, put the three points on the board, and uh, as quick as they struck their through those first three plays and uh, yeah, the captain's the timeout the captain's timeout kind of took uh, Clarkston and kind of knocked a, knocked a little rhythm out of their drive but you take a look here the Wolves uh, I, I don't know if that's fourth down and four I might even with with the experienced quarterback this is Dane Fife's third year as a quarterback as a starting quarterback for the Wolves he's going to have another year next year and I thought maybe he might uh, try to draw the captains offside and get the easy first down but uh, look but yeah, we'll the scouts are sure. salivating over this kid Roy and they've already got basketball uh, scouts out here attending these football games to look at Dane Fife. Yeah, that, that's... And we'll see if uh, one of those go schools... To his practices. Yeah, one of those schools. Let's see if one of those schools, the long line of Fife's there, played at the University of Michigan. And yeah, we'll I, see if I, that, I would think uh, that'd be a long shot. Uh, is it maybe one of his choices? Yeah. Anyway, we got two receivers split out to the near side. We both got both Conley and Enrizal. As the captains are got... Uh, they're trying movement everywhere. Flags are down. And did somebody... Oh, the... Well, Clarkston uh, says it's on the captains. Did they break containment there? Yeah, I think it is, and that's going to be a first down, Roy. And indeed, that's going to be an easy one, too, as that's the fourth first down of this drive. This one here is the first one in the ball game via the penalty route, as Clarkston will have it first and goal from the Kettering three. Well, they wanted to have the movement, and indeed they got it, and that's the way to go. That's a smart percentage play. The Wolves are in their maize and blue type uniforms as they've added the wing helmets here in the last year. You got the U of M look out there. Got to love those helmets. Uh, yes, sir. The best helmets in college football, and I think Clarkson's adopted them here for, for them over here off Main Street. And here on the run, it's just going to be about a yard. Maybe that's about it. As this time, the captains will break through. Uh, coming on is Dave McGugan. Uh, the running back on that play was uh, Brad Phelan, and Phelan will get one. That'll now make it second and goal from about the three and a half or so. Our clock continues to move. We have no score at Waterford Kettering on a it's kind of a chilly evening, but it's still, it's still pretty out there. It's not terrible. We might see that in another month in November when uh, we might be building snowmen. Who knows? One of the things that you'll see from Clarkston, they'll send a lot of men in and out on each play, Roy. A lot of substitutions. Two tight ends, powerhouse backfield, failing to follow a block, powers his helmet down, and he's hog collar down at about the two, about a one-yard gain. As Justin Dyer, one of the players in there, Jarwa as well. Boys, this this Jarwa has got to have to be Division II All League. This kid has been great. He's been one of the bright spots for the captains. The captains. Check this out, Bob. Since our last ball game, we have an entirely new front four, two new outside linebackers, only the secondary, and the two inside linebackers, the Rushman and Zapata, have remained uh, since the opening ball game that we did three weeks ago. Up over center, we got Fife, and straight through, it's a dive close to the goal line. Phelan that time tried to power behind his blockers, Zavatsky and Guilford, and is close to the goal line but doesn't have it, and that'll be about a yard, actually two yard gain there for Phelan. Fourth down and inches is what the captains are gonna try to defense. And if Clarkson's gonna go for it on fourth and four, I would think a goal yeah, line this is, uh, is what I wanna do. Definitely in sneak territory. Let's see if uh, Dane Fife just doesn't keep this ball and go over his big center there, right? Could be, and the handoff will go to Phelan, but as he powers behind his blockers, he actually could have been stopped behind the goal line, but that time Jeff Long, uh, make that long, he actually was blocked by his own guys back over the top of the line, and he scores. 
And uh, you know what? The, the Trump question was that was, was that failing or wrong? I, just, I, I, I couldn't see uh, who scored it that was touchdown. Long. It was right, long. I, yeah, I, that's what I had as long, and all of a sudden I had some raised eyebrows. I was wondering. And it's six nothing here. The Clarkston Walls attempting the extra point will be Mason. As we've got flags everywhere, and the Clarkston line moves, and I have a feeling they're going to be pushed back five. And that will uh, make this extra point attempt just a little bit longer. Yeah, long scores from one yard out. Here comes our extra point attempt. This will be take two on this one as our kicker once again is Mason for Clarkston. Here I got the ball is snapped. The kick is up. A little bit of pressure, but not enough to prevent that extra point. So here we got it. With 8-12 to remain in the first, Clarkston takes the opening kickoff. They get five first downs and pour themselves out on a Jeff Long touchdown. The extra point is good. We'll be back as the captains will get this kickoff here in a moment. When you need a mortgage, you need answers. That's why so many consumers are relying on Roy Akers at American Mortgage Services for their home financing needs. Smart shoppers know how much they can afford before they shop and then get a firm commitment on it. When you need a mortgage, Roy Akers has the answers to your questions. For fast, dependable service from a trained professional, call Roy Akers toll-free today at 1-888-265-7500. Evening and weekend hours are available for your convenience. Well, you're back on Comcast TV 45 Sports. I'm Bob Montgomery along with Roy Akers. And recapping, uh, the Clarkston Wolves took their opening drive and took it in for seven, Roy. Yeah, they sure did. They were very methodical. They were going down biff, bam, boom there. They had three first downs on three first, uh, three consecutive passes and eventually ran the ball in. And here coming up, the captains might have lost a football at the last minute. Was the fella down or what have you? Dan Barth, the up man, got it, but they say the captains uh, got it, and it looked like Barth might have hit the turf. Yeah, I think the ground the caused that fumble, Roy, more than anything there on that play. And there you'll have it. The captains, let's take a look at their offense. The quarterback, Tim Morris. The running backs are Dan Barth and Dan Rose. The split end is Justin Newingham. Flanker is Adam Mountain. The tight end is Nick Reeser. The tackles are Justin Dyer and Jason Bodner. The guards are Jason Trolls and Dave McGugan. The center is Steve Robinette. The Clarkston D's coming up here in a moment. And this time the handoff will go to Barth. And Barth is going to pick up two or three yards. As this time he powers behind Bodner and Trollson for about two, maybe three. And there you'll have that. Well, I think one of the big keys coming into this ball game for the Kettering captains, Roy, they've got to get their run game established here and keep their offense on the field as much as they can. If you're sitting Dane, F Dane, Dane Fife over there on the sidelines, keep the ball out of his hands. There, and there you have it. Add a mountain to the near side, Newingham to the far. The man in motion is Reeser, a quick hitter out to Newingham who caught that ball. He was already on his, knee, on his knees and that's gonna be a gain of about five there on the little flat pass. So the captains are trying to give uh, Clarkston a little bit of their own type medicine here. Third down and three for the captains. Here's our defense for the Wolves. Our defensive tackles are Schlaff and Reb. The nose guard is Mike Underwood. The linebackers are Kukla, Zavarsky, Long, and Evans. Richardson, Kaiser, Mason, and Conley are all the cornerbacks. And here comes the captains. They will stay on their feet for a first down. Beautiful running play by Dan Barth, who avoided the Clarkston tackler. Busting through was Jay Richardson, who got the hit on him. But Barth uh, had a great enough job of balance. keeping his balance on that play, Roy. Correct. And now the captains have their first first down here tonight, as we've seen a we'll good We'll take a look at it here. You can see some of the balance here. Richardson does make the hit, but he's able to keep his balance to pick up the first down. Captains on another quick hitter to Newingham as a complete into the secondary to the 35. He's going to be hugged, collar down at the 28. As what a beautiful grab by Newingham. Nice coverage that time by the Clarkston Wolves, Jason Kaiser. Well, That's you talked about it, Roy, yards. that uh, one of the players that you were impressed with from the captains has been the play of Justin Newingham out there at the receiver position. Yeah, he was initially hit as soon as he caught the ball, shook off the first contact and made movement. Now the captains are in business at the Clarkston 28. Handoff will once again go to Barth. 
and Bartha stacked up immediately. It was there was no running room as that time it looked like Schlaff and Underwood were quickly collapsing on things. Also in there as well was Ryan. Well, we said Schlaff, so there you've got that. A half yard pickup for Bart. Yeah, one of the most impressive catches, two catches, was by Justin or uh, by Justin Newingham was back in that Royal Oak Kimball game. Fell flat on his back, held the ball, and then took the next pass in for the touchdown to beat the Knights. Second and long nine, rolling out Morris. Morris has got nobody downfield, but oh, goes underneath on a nice grab to Adam Mountain and Mountain down to the 20. Mountain busted three, free from Zavatsky at the last moment and came in there and they'll move the chains for about 13. It looked like the captain saw nothing, but Tim Morris, he spotted somebody out of a blink of an eye. Waterford Kettering has three first downs. Right now, Roy, I try to go back to the run game. He's kind of established a passing game and this will uh, open up the run game. And here's a handoff straight up the middle. I think they were listening to you. His rolls will run behind Robinette for about four. Quickly busting through uh, was Zavarsky for Clarkston, who will make the stop. Make it about a three-yard gain. That's the first carry for Dan Rose tonight as we played almost seven minutes of this opening quarter in a very well-played football game by both the offenses. Very methodical. It's nice to see that. Mountain to the near, Newingham to the far, and Morris is looking for Newingham, and he might have had him, but instead sliding down and putting the knee on the turf. Tim Morris, and Newingham was wide open, but I think real, Morris made Real wise sense. decision, though, that time by uh, Morris to pull that ball down and take what he could have. I think through the first four games, Roy, he's been throwing that ball up for grabs. That's why he has nine interceptions so far this year. Well, I, I understand your decision. I would have thrown that one. No, I thought he was open, but I can certainly, have, well, when you have two of them, they're almost taken well, out that of makes the you a little gun shot. out of your hands, yeah. Well, with it, third down and seven. Here's a handoff, and this time it'll go to Barth, and Barth will find nothing. He's stacked up by the Clarkston Wolves. Ryan Kukla will put the hit first. No gain on WK, and that'll bring up fourth down. Eight yards and four carries for Barth. Rose has a carry for three. Here comes our field goal opportunity. Quinn has the ball down. Morris to hold. The student body left. Student body right. They're even doing the swinging gain. Yeah, the swinging gain. I just, I don't agree with it, Roy. And they got it down, and the kick is blocked. And we'll go through the end zone, and the Wolves have held. And they still lead this contest 7-0. Bob, right. that time, I think what happened there on the kick was that Kettering lined up about five yards behind the line of scrimmage there to uh, have that kick. Normally, you want to see about seven yards drop back by your place kicker. I think they just got that time too close to the line. That's one of the reasons that kick got blocked. Yeah, I think he might have had too much too much of his teammates a little too close to the football. And like you say, when you're gonna you're gonna shoot up a missile, in this case the football, you need a little bit of room and the captains might have had a breakdown there somewhere. And here we got Fife up over center. The Clarkston Wolves are working out of the eye. Fife out of the flat. Pass is incomplete. This time, Adam Mountain was all over the receiver. Uh, Mike Matrot never had a shot because Mountain had some Velcro coverage on this guy, and Fife has thrown his first incompletion. After one drive for each of these squads, the Wolves have five first downs to the captain's three. With 3.39 to go here in the opening quarter, the Wolves lead at 7 0. Bob, I, when you take a look at Clarkston and Troy, I think Clarkston's a better football team than Troy. I can tell that already just I watching them for yeah. one dry. Troy is more boring than vanilla, than vanilla ice cream. I'll tell you, that team, well, very overrated, in my opinion. Rolling out. We, oh, we got the handoff. Beautiful block by, to Phelan. Phelan has first down yardage, wraps around and gets second effort and is helped pushed up by a teammate who springs him forward for a gain of about 18. Phelan is one of the leading ball carriers in Oakland County. Uh, as a matter of fact, Brad Phelan is ranked fifth in the county. He's averaging 125 yards a game, averaging over five and a half yards per pop so far this year. I think, let's take a look at it here, Roy, before uh, we go to it. We got a good look from our uh, handheld camera along the sidelines there. There was just some great downfield blocking. And Kettering there with the five-man front. Actually, they have four with the man that's stunning in at the linebacker. Fight back to pass. Let's it go, and the pass is complete on a beautiful effort. 
This time he had a, at, at the little stop and go, Matrot had caught the ball at the 45. Well, that's going to be a gain of a 16. What they're going to have to do to Matrot, Frack, and uh, Brown out there at the wide receiver position, Roy, somebody's going to come up and have to lay a hit on them first so that these guys hold them up at the line of scrimmage so they can't go downfield to pick up these passes. And now the Wolves have it, first and 10 at the captain's 44. Six first down, so for make that seven for the Wolves here tonight. And back to pass is Fife. Fife is rolling to his blind side, whips it downfield. Pass is overthrown. Adam Mountain got a mid on it. It could have been picked, but the pass will go incomplete. Fife is now four for six passing this evening. Well, that time they sent Dan Rose from the end out there, Roy, and he got some pressure on Fife that time. Second down and 10. The Wolves have the football here at the Kettering 44. Clarkston has already scored once in this football game. Three straight five passes in the first three plays of this ball game out of the no huddle. Set the pace for a one yard scoring run by Jeff Wong here so far tonight. Seven nothing Clarkston. Here's a wraparound handoff into the backfield. Springing loose is Phelan. Phelan inside the 40, streaming along the sideline. He's gone, but we got a flag down. Phelan was angled out finally by Jarwa, who came out of nowhere as he usually does. But we have a flag early, and I think we're gonna have a clip here on yeah, the Yeah, I think it, either way it's coming back, Roy. And it should be uh, probably from a spot of the foul here. Well, I don't know how far this will come back. Let's take a look at it, Roy. You can see Phelan breaking loose there. I don't see if we could, oh, right definitely. there, right there. Yeah, the he just passed the uh, plane. Now you can block that way until, until the player comes back, but they're going to call it second down as it's going to be a spot foul. That's a 10-yard flag that time. 10-yard flag there on Clarkston. That's their second uh, flag call against them tonight. The captains have one penalty tonight for five yards, but although it did create a... Uh, a Clarkston first down. So second down and 15. Split out now to the near side is going to be Conley. Split out over to the far is Matrot. Fife going back. The pocket's going to collapse. Fife rolling for his life. He's hit, but the ball is almost picked. Jerwa had it. And what a play. The hero of that play, Mike Matrot to Clarkston, tipped that ball away from Jerwa or that pass. Jerwa had all kinds of real estate that time. Yeah, should have had that one, be. Roy. Well, no, he could have, but the ball was tipped away. What a play. That's where your receiver becomes a defensive back, and uh, smart playing that time. Wolves are very well coached, so are the captains. But Dane Fife is, uh, it seems like Clarkston, about every five years, they come up with one of those kids that could become a major college player, and the Wolves do it between the McCormicks and now the Fife's. Fife back to pass, pocket collapsing, he gets rid of it, passes! Bobbled and incomplete. Frank had it. It hit him so square in the number that the... Yeah, right off the was, old shoulder pad right that's there. That's right. right. He was thinking of endorsements and college scholarships before he even caught that one. That pass falls incomplete. And it's now fourth down and 15. And Frank's their leading receiver out there for Clarkston, Roy. On the season, uh, I think he got some numbers on him for receiving. Yeah, 17 grabs for 228 yards. He's uh, fifth in the county and receiving as the Clarkston Wolves have this balanced attack. The punter for the Wolves is Frack, who couldn't handle the ball a moment ago. And uh, punt is off. Not a lot of pressure by the captains. Feeling this ball for the cab up. They will not let anybody feel it as the Wolves will have it at their own 17 and Waterford Kettering will begin there. So. Kettering will have the football. Bob, what do, you, what do you like so far about this ball game? Well, so far, I mean, both of these uh, teams in their opening drives, Roy, march downfield. So offensively, I think uh, Coach Barry's got to be pleased with what happened offensively during that first series. And uh, for Coach Duff on his defensive side to stop him there in the second drive for the Wolves, he's got to be pretty pleased about that. Captains have it with a minute 58 to go here in the quarter. And... Quickly busting through and finding nothing is Dan Barth. Barth this time is wrapped up by pretty much a half a dozen players for the Wolves. Jeff Long and uh, Jay Richardson in there on the tackle, Roy. Well, there he, no gain for Dan Barth. Five carries, eight yards for Dan, and that's been a big problem. See, yeah, it captains. really is. It's it been on first down, too. That's where, 
I know Coach Barry would like to get his troops moving the ball on the ground a little bit better on first down. Because it's going to bring up second check and third. Check this out. Jerwa split out now to the near side. Newingham to the far. Barth has got a little bit of running room and is going to finally be run out of bounds close to first down yard. Matter of fact, he's got a first down at the 28 yard line. He needed the 27. It's a nice gain that time of 10. Well, Jerwa is now wide out. At that time, he just took it up over his tackle there, uh, uh, Jason Dyer there, Roy, and uh, I know that's where he'd like to run. Newingham to the far, over to the near is Mountain. The running backs, actually, we got a new guy out there. It looks like we're going well, to have Barth and Rose again, and this time on the carry will be Barth. And Barth will go around off tackle as he goes around Bodner and Reeser, and he'll pick up about two. So the captains have four first downs tonight. The Wolves have seven. Clarkston has a 7 nothing lead as we are finishing up our final minute of this opening quarter. I enjoyed this ball game. This has been a pretty much a very fundamental type contest here. This is something I was hoping to see. Morris with it. Back to pass on a quick drop. Oh, is he hammered? Busting through that time. Jeff Long gives him a tattoo he'll never get off. He busted through that time and just drilled him three yards into the turf. Our first sack of the game, Timmy Morris. I don't know. He might want to shake the butterflies out. We got a replay. I'd like to see that one again. That time, Jeff Long there, Roy. He's a junior. Goes to 200 pounds, 5'10", playing right the inside linebacker position. We can pull that one up later. That would be great. To the near side is Mountain back to pass. Uh, Mountain is the intended target, hauls it in. He is just hammered by Long and also by Brad Bailey as soon as he catches it. But Mountain will pick up about uh, seven or eight, uh, depending on our spot. It looks like they're going to give him about eight once again. But that'll bring up fourth down. Let's take a look at this uh, pass here. That time, right from our end zone, or right from our handheld camera that time. Good job, guys. And there's Long in on the tackle again on that play, Roy. Yes, he sure is. He has been super here so far. And with that, that's the end of our first quarter of play. We're going to be back with our second quarter in a moment after one. Clarkston seven, the captain's nothing. Hey, Mom, can we get out use the car? We want to go to the mall. Can I go, too? No way, Petey. Okay, but take Petey. Did you see Ellen at home today? What's up with that lip? I know you want to kiss her on that lip. Yeah, you're the one dreaming about her. Petey, sit down. I think you need to know that Ellen's There are no excuses. Don't wreck your life. Always buckle them in. When the TV goes on in Mr. Jones' class, I know it's going to be interesting. We see places we wouldn't normally be able to see and meet people in history. Hey, let's talk about Cable this. in the classroom is a powerful tool. More than 30 cable networks design programs specifically for the classroom. No commercials, no viewing requirements. I'm in control. You'll research a region and then represent... We usually have to do a report, but it's interesting, so it's always really fun. Distinguished members of the Circle of Nations. Cable is giving us a fantastic free service. It's up to us to use it. Captains have the football. First play of the second quarter. And the punt is off as they will be forced to punt. Frank will kick it, and it will actually roll, uh, find its way out of bounds, taking a nice captain's hop to about the 33-yard line. And Clarkston will start with their third possession here of the first half. Each team has two possessions here so far, and our game scores 7-0 as the Wolves are playing some pretty methodical football both ways against the captains. You know, it's funny, the Oakland Press had a 10-point Clarkston win. The uh, Vicks picks over there. Yeah, the I saw morning, that over at Victor's. It was Victor's. like 38 to 7, yeah. something like that. And so far, the captains, even though they're behind by 7, I say this is still anybody's ball game. Nobody's asserted themselves. Flags everywhere. The captains jumped, and it looked like you can jump. You can get across the line, but if you make contact with the offensive player and they don't flinch, it's all over. So it's a defensive offside. Clarkston with a first and five now. Second penalty of the game against the captains. Clarkston has two penalties for 15. The captains, two penalties for 10. I tell you what, I, I don't know about you, I, but those hot dogs are grilling down there. Boy, I, those, those are good. That's a new addition this year. Yeah, okay. cooking up some brats and sausages down there and hot dogs. I'll take uh, that over the stale popcorn any day. 
And coming out, split out now to the near side. They got Conley over to the far as Matron. Up the halfback option pass. It's going from Mason downfield. The ball is just overthrown. Conley was the target. The captains had three defensive backs on the challenge for that. Incomplete. Yeah, Adam Mountain that time, his main responsibility was to cover Conley, and Conley got past Adam Mountain that time, and if that ball would have been on the money, Roy, it would have been seven. Yeah, that is that is true. He did have a step on him, although uh, it looked like pretty early, the, the Clarkston, while they almost pulled the playoff, they could have made it a little bit more discreet. That might have helped the captains get some players back on it. Clarkson and the pro set out of the eye on the far hash mark. They have a man in motion. It's Matron. It's Fife here on the wraparound handoff. We'll get the ball to Phelan. Phelan on his feet. He's got first down yard. It's more than midfield. Jerwa will finally put the helmet to his midsection and bring him down after a gain of about 20. Beautiful run by Brad Phelan and his longest run of the night. 43 yards and five carries for Brad. Go big. We have 11.28 to go here in this opening half. Clarkston is on the march, Bob. Yeah, they are. So we'll see what Al Duff can do defensively to uh, stop this drive. Matrot to the near, Frack to the far. Fife up over center as Clarkston works out of the eye. They have the football. Kettering has a five-man front. The handoff will go to the second man through. That's Phelan. And Phelan will get to the Kettering 44 as he powers behind Bubba Clement and Mike Eberhart for about three. Justin Dyer there, Roy. He's a sophomore, 6'2", 230. That's a big kid for a sophomore. He's got a lot of potential over here playing the next three years for the captains. Clarkston, with all this promise they have, they are ranked in the football playoff point polls. They are number two in Division Three. If the season ended today, they would play Troy in the playoff game, but that'll change certainly. And here's a completion into the secondary, busting through. A beautiful tackle from behind by the captain's Matt Guilford. His fight that time had the ball complete. Rushman with a nice stop. The completion that time was to, I believe it was Matrot, and Matrot is going to pick up about 24 yards. These are just little slant in plays, Roy, that uh, Fife's completing here. And they're going to have to, uh, you can see it here on our replay before we go to the tape here. That's just a little slant coming across the field. And that's uh, Fife right on the numbers and with these Fife passes. And Fife with a sweep toss to Phelan inside the 15. Stutters around a couple of players, but the captains that time will hold the containment. Is in there on the stop, Jair Zapata, whose name we haven't called a lot tonight, will stop Phelan after a gain of two. 9.48 to go. Our clock is continuing to run here on a beautiful fall evening. And I think this is going to be one of the uh, well-balanced offensive teams that we're going to see probably all season long. Rushing and passing here by the Clarkston Wolves. So far tonight, the captains have held down the rush, Roy. Frack and Maytrot are the receivers to the near side. And here on the wraparound, Phelan will stutter step around a couple of players, but he'll tiptoe back to the initial line of scrimmage. He'll gain nothing. Zapata's in there on the stop. The captains look like they also get, it looks like uh, Dyer in there as well. No gain for Phelan. 48 yards and eight carries for Brad Phelan. Third down, and we'll call it a long eight as we played the three, first three minutes of the opening Second quarter of the opening half, I should say, here at WK. We got Fife up here over center. He might be changing the play. A quick hitter for the end zone. Frick almost hauled that in, and Adam Mount was turned around that time. Holy smokes. He never even knew what happened. Well, I think Adam better. Mount that time bit on Brad Conley cutting into the post, Roy, and uh, left Frick all alone. Let's take a look at it here. We can see it just at the end of the play there. Almost a fine grab by uh, Jason Frack there. Yeah, Frack escaped that time, but the ball just overthrown, and the Wolves would have had seven. Clock temporarily stopped with 8.46 to play here in the second quarter. Clarkston with the football on fourth down and nine. They're they going for it. not kick the field goal. They are going for it. Split out to the near side. Matt Brown for one of the few times tonight. They got Frack to the far, and Brown is the intended target. Pass is incomplete. Super coverage by Adam Mountain. 
who hit Frank as soon as he touched the ball and wrapped his arms up so he couldn't haul it in. Turnover it out. Yeah, that was just a great hit there by Mountain. That time on Matt Brown out there as uh, Brown came in for Frack that time at the wide receiver position, Roy. But Adam Mountain timed that hit perfectly to knock the ball loose. 8.40 to go in the half. The Kettering captains will now have the football still in this contest. And here on the wraparound, it's going to go out here to the captains, Danny Barth. And Barth uh, started off at the 17, gets out to about the 22. And depending on our spot, we'll have a gain of five or maybe six. Nice running play that, that time. time. That yeah, and I think that's exactly what Mike Barry's looking for out of his running game, Roy. That these uh, running backs, uh, Barth and Rose, they're going to have to start picking up some yardage on first down. Clarkson only has a three-man front, although now they're going to have a couple of the linebackers cheating in. And here comes Barth once again, and Barth will pick up about three, as this time he runs behind Robinette and McGugan and we'll make it third down and short. 29 yards and nine carries for Barth tonight. Rose has one carry for three. Morris also has a carry for three yards here this evening. Third down and about a yard. We've played almost four minutes of the second quarter. We've got the regular pro set out of the eye and a handoff will go to the second man through and a first down and more has wrapped around and spun down. Dan Bark has a first down. Evans comes through and makes the stop for Clarkston. And Jeff Long on the play there, Roy. And uh, we've talked to, can take a look at it here. Jeff Long has been all over this field tonight for the Clarkston Wolves. That time you see Barth, he's able to get outside, but a great tackle in there by uh, Jeff Long. And it's now first down and 10. The captains have five first downs tonight out of the near hash mark. They got a slot back, that's Reeser, and he's got Morris looking for him. Looks out of the flat though, looks him off, and gets back to him, man. It's once again Reeser for the first down. Boy, I love that. That's a completion for 13 yards. You gotta like a team that throws to the tight end. That's a, that's a, that's always a huge difference in football. When you got a tight end that can that, haul it Nick in. Nick Reeser's got some good hands on him, he right? He's, I wish uh, they use them more. You know, showing some uh, good catching ability out here this season. Morris, you wanna you wanna talk about having a heart attack, Bob? He's five for five passing so far tonight. And here's the wraparound handoff to Rose, and Rose will pick up five yards. As this time, at a little counter move, he runs behind Robinette and McGugan, and it's now second and five. Rose has run only twice here tonight for eight yards. We just passed the seven minute mark. We played five minutes of the second quarter. Captains are on the march. They have five first, make that six first downs tonight to Clarkston's nine. Up here over center, here comes a handoff to the second man through. It's Rose for first down. Rose into the secondary. Rose spinning around everybody. He is gone. It's he'll score. And we're one point away from a touchdown. Yeah, it was Dan Barth there, Roy. And that time it was Barth, not Rose there on that touchdown run. A great run here by the captains here. I and we're a point away from... I think I saw it better before I got glad. <laughs> we're, we're a point away from tying up this ball game. And there you have it as the captain. Great job there. Let's take a great. look at it before we go to this extra point attempt here. That time, Rose, or Barth gets all outside, cuts it across field, finds daylight over there, takes it in for the six. He spun the Clarkston in secondary inside and out, and the ball is down. Morris is rolling out. He will just take it in and score. And the captains have a one-point lead. Holy smokes, the captains are up 8-7 here at home with six and a half to go here in the opening half. And boy, have they played a spirited ball game. Well, you're watching Comcast TV 45 Sports. The captain's up top, 8-7. We'll be back right after this. When you need a mortgage, you need answers. That's why so many consumers are relying on Roy Akers at American Mortgage Services for their home financing needs. Smart shoppers know how much they can afford before they shop and then get a firm commitment on it. When you need a mortgage, Roy Akers has the answers to your questions. For fast, dependable service from a trained professional, call Roy Akers toll-free today at 1-888-265-7500. Evening and weekend hours are available for your convenience. 
Well, you're back on Comcast TV 45 Sports. I'm Bob Montgomery along with Roy Akers in the broadcast booth. And can you smell upset even though we're in the first half? I don't think anybody out there imagined that the score right now would be the captain's eight, the Clarkston Wolves seven. And uh, fundamentally, Roy, I think the Kettering captains have played their best game so far this year, and they beat a Royal Oak Kimball Knight team that was very good, but this team is much better than the Knights from Royal Oak. They sure are, but I really wouldn't get excited if I was a captains fan, I because you still got two and a half quarters to play, although it's certainly a good start, and they lead by one, and now the captains fans, I think uh, everybody, uh, everybody's woken up now, as Clarkston won't get a whole lot on that return. They'll start off on their own 23-yard line. Taking a look at uh, tonight's ball game, we've got some other dandies going on here and over the next day. And here I just set the paper up and disappears out in front of me. But we have, do have some pretty nice ball games happening uh, all around us here. We're, matter of fact, we're going to talk about them here in the next few minutes. Phelan with it. Phelan gets from the 23 to the, about the 25. It'll make it second down and eight. So Phelan will pick up a couple and it'll make it once again second and eight. In those ball games I was talking about a moment ago, Adams is at Waterford Mott over there on the Scott Lake Road and Pontiac Lake Roads here tonight. Also tonight, Centerline St. Clement is at Notre Dame Prep. Also, Our Lady of the Lakes is in our Ann Arbor gave over Chardon and tomorrow's ball games. We'll tell you about those in just a second. His Fife is up over center. He's got two receivers split out to the near side. Fife on a timing pattern has to complete the Freck and Jarrett just clobbers Freck. But Freck holds on and has a first down as he pulls it in for 10 yards. What a grab as Freck that time took the crack over the middle. Let's take a look at it this time. Freck this time. And that's just a little slant in. Boy, you can see that right from our handheld camera. And Ryan Jarris that time, Roy, came up and made the big hit. And it's now first and 10. The Wolves have 10 first downs tonight. They have the football with five and a half to go. And here on the uh, delayed handoff, it's going to be failing. It'll barely get back to the line of scrimmage. That time, the captains have all kinds of players, including it looks like Bogola's in there. Also, Dave McGugan, and that'll be a pickup of a half a yard. We'll just call it zero. It's second down and nine and a half. So far tonight, the Clarkson Wolves have gained all their ground, Roy, either by passing or trying to run outside the tackles. They haven't got anything yet established inside the tackles in uh, running the ball up the middle. Second down and nine. Our clock will once again start moving as we're shaded under five minutes to go here in half number one. Eight, seven captains over Clarkston. And Fife over the middle has the ball complete for big yardage for about 17. Ducking under and hauling that one in is Travis Pegg, one of the two tight ends. The first time we've called his name tonight, hauls it in for a big gainer. That was just a simple slant pattern for nice yardage. See there, it's just a great touch that uh, this Dane Fife possesses out here on the field, Roy. And uh, he's one of the finer passers at the prep level that I've seen. We've seen some good ones. Jim Miller, Don Fellows over here from the captains. And now in motion is Frack for the Wolves. And he's got Fife looking the other way. Steps out of the pocket, delivers it. And Frack will be the intended target. But that time, Fife was hammered pretty hard is that time the captains will have players like J.R. Zapata run J.R. Zapata, I think that time Roy got an arm and uh, hit Fife as he was passing that ball. Our clock is temporarily stopped on the field. We have 4.16 to go here in our opening half. The Clarkston Wolves are trailing in this contest 8-7 and uh, so far is a game that the captains were not really supposed to be in. But they are, and they're playing dandy here so far tonight. Two men in motion. We actually got one man in motion for the Wolves, both to the near side. Fife here on the delay, and Phelan has just hammered. The captains were, they had their hands on his jersey. By the time Brad got the football, he loses seven. J.R. Zapata and David Rushman, that time from their linebackers, blitzed Roy. And they got into the backfield for that big loss. Let's take a look at it here. You can see right there, J.R. Zapata comes through almost untouched, gets in on the tackle along with Rushman. Boy, Rushman that time just put the mitts to Phelan, and 
Makes it now, third down and quite a bit. Rolling out on the naked bootleg is Fife. Fife's got room to run, and he will step out of bounds at the Kettering 45. He picks up 11. He kept put, pumping the football out, trying to draw players off him. And so Fife on the naked bootleg will pick up some decent yardage, but he's well short of the first down. But that'll make it fourth down at about seven. And the Wolves, in a punting situation, look like they have indeed right off their punt team as the captains have somehow made a ball game out of this. And, and I'm really happy to see the captains do this because we, I, I don't want to get spoiled watching the captains play. The captains have played good football the last few years, and it's been a little surprising to see them go 1-3 and three so far. Mountain and also Newingham are back deep at their own 15-yard lines. Our punter is Mason, and it's a short little effort. The captains will move away from it. Oh, it takes a WK hop as the ball is down by Mark Andrezel, and the captains will have the ball first and 10 at about their own. That time Mason yard. must have been like the little pooch punter that uh, trying to get that pooch punt in there. Jason Freck uh, handles some of the punt duties over here for the Clarkson Wolves, right? You know, it's funny, but 10, 15 years ago in football, you saw a lot of punters that were actually pretty good at kicking the the out-of-bounds punt, and that yeah. punt has seemed to have gone out of fashion. Here's a reverse handoff. Once again, the captains are going to try Dan Vars' number, and he'll pick up about a yard, and that's about it. Second down and nine. We have 3.15 to go here in this half. But we used to see what they call the coffin corner punting, and right. that punt has went out, of, went out of fashion. I remember Herman Weaver was tremendous at it, and so was Gerald Wilson of the Kansas City Chiefs, and those punters that went by the wayside, that's the pooch punt that's the rage of the NFL these days. Reeser here in motion, sweep toss to Barth. Barth is going to be hammered as he'll get back to maybe the line of scrimmage long once again. Well, we've called his name a lot, Roy, and... Uh, Playing from the linebacker position there. This kid's just all over the field tonight. One of two Clarkston two-way players, Long and Zavarsky, are the players. Uh, Long is a junior. He's one of the players that are going to come back next year. And unfortunately for the Wolves, uh, next year they will be starting some underclassmen in the receivers, so they're going to have to promote somebody. Back to pass Morris out of the shotgun. Has the ball almost picked off. Stepping out of the flat, Conley stepped in front of Newingham and almost had six. I think he saw a lot of green in front of him, and that wasn't the captain's uh, jerseys, but the green of the grass. There, that time you got to make the catch and then take it in. Let's take a look at it, Roy. We got it from our end zone camera here. And, well, would have been a difficult catch, pass a little bit high. He could have tipped it, but the ball is busted. Uh-oh, and Clarkstead is... I think they could have shot the movie Speed in Your Car. Come on, the bus is better. You can relax on the bus, snooze on the bus, whatever. And these days, you can get wherever you'd go in a car on the bus. Call us for one of our route maps. You'll see you're never more than a quarter mile from one of our bus stops. And if you want to find out how easy it is to ride smart, just... And we're back, and the Clarkston Wolves have called time out. We've just come out of it. They have a minute 34 to try to put some more points on the board. They actually trailed in this contest 8-7 to seven about halfway through this quarter as the captain scored on a 50-yard run from Barth. And the punt is off, though. The Clarkston Wolves will field it on. Oh, not a fair catch. It's failing. Still on his feet. He's actually blocked by a captain's player from the captain's 48 to the 45. And the Wolves will have tremendous field position starting at the Kettering side of the field at their 45 or so with a minute 24 to go here in this half. The Wolves have a 13 to 8 lead, and if they can score here, I think that you can say they'll have command once again. Split out now to the near side is going to be Brad Conley. Split out over the far is Frack. Conley is the intended target. Beautiful coverage by Mountain, who hit him as soon as he touched the football. The ball falls incomplete. Fife is now 7 for 16 passing here this evening. He's tried some timing patterns that he hasn't been able to have his receivers haul in, but uh, he's looked best at the slant patterns. The timing patterns of I haven't really clicked here so far for the Wolves tonight. Split out to the near is Matt Brown. There are actually going to be three receivers, Freck, Brown, and also Conley. The pass underneath, and it's almost oh. picked, and Mountain had the entire side of the field 
with only Conley to beat if he could have hauled it in and just dropped an easy one. Holy smokes. It's one of the differences for the captains this year. Their opponents have nine Should be able to take a good look at it here. You can see the ball up in the air that time, and uh, Mountain there just, oh, almost right. I don't know if our audience would have recognized that last uh, replay, but my point on the matter is this. We'll tell you in just a second. Uh, in motion, Frack coming over to us. We got receivers. Split out double side near and out of the backfield. Failing along the sidelines is in the open field inside the 30. He's got a block, spins out Jarrah and scores. Jarrah from 35 yards and 45 out had the closest play. And that time it looked like Phelan was hemmed in, but he found his way, he's tiptoed down the sideline and cut to the middle of the field and scored. The Wolves um, increased their lead to 19-8. Biggest pass play tonight for the Wolves. First touchdown pass for Fife. And now the captains have called timeout. What a strange play. It looked like that play was going nowhere, Bob. Yeah, it looked like they had it bottled up there at the line of scrimmage. And uh, I don't know if we got that on replay there, Matt. Uh, if we can uh, go to that. Uh... Okay. So we don't have that on our uh, replay, but uh, the Clarkston Wolves, much like they did to open this game, uh, just marched down the field rather quickly there, Roy. You want to talk about poor use of the clock for the captains? At the 10-1 mark of this quarter, uh, Phelan scored on a five-yard run. The captains had three and out. The Wolves have ran three more plays. Six plays have been run off in 50 uh, in, in 58 seconds, Clarkston has already scored again. Six plays have been run off the clock. Captains have been able to do nothing with the football. And the captains, the second half of this quarter, since they took the lead offensively, have just uh, totally misclicked. They have nothing has happened positive for them. They have mismanaged the clock here so far. The captains will go for it. They are up 19-8. to eight. They're going to try the two-point conversion, and on the naked bootleg, Fife is out. He's going to be trying, almost hammered underneath. Ball tipped up and batted down. The pass is incomplete. Nice pressure by the captains, Dan Rose and Josh Liuzu, and the Clarkston's lead will remain 19-8. Bob? Well, let's uh, set our crew out here for you tonight. Our game is being directed by Matt Latham. Our video engineering is handled by Larry Gavette. Our replays are handled by James Ross. Our audio is being taken care of tonight by Sue Gavette. Working the handheld camera down on the sidelines is Gabe Niemeyer and uh, Steve Campbell. Working up top in the bucket truck is Joshua D. Bowron. And up top in our stands is Henry Barron. Our field audio tonight is being handled by Matt Whale. Our production assistant tonight is Vicki Matthews. Uh, great job uh, all around there, guys. Morris and Newingham are the deep players for the captains. They'll be at their own 10-yard line. The Clarkston Wolves, who took a while to get their engines revving, but have taken advantage of the captains, scoring two touchdowns in the last 58 playing seconds. And this little pooch punt will be fielded by WK. They'll have it at their own 35. And they'll just run it up to close to the 40-yard line. And with 57 seconds to go, the captains have very good field position at their own 39. By that time, I think... Uh, Mike Berry brought some good hands people. He brought Barth and Rose up there uh, to, he figured that's what Kurt Richardson was gonna try again. And uh, first and 10 at their own 39 do the captains. WK with it, they trail 19 to eight, still in this ball game. The wraparound handoff will go to Rose. Rose at midfield, Rose into the secondary, powers his way into Clarkston territory down to the 42. That's a 20 yard run for Danny Rose. It's a big run and our clock has stopped as we move the chains once again. The captains will have one last opportunity here. Here you see it. Uh, there, Rose picks up good yardage, taking it up the middle. We'll go captains, back to live action. Yeah, Rose will gain about four behind his line of Robinette and Trozen. And that's a two-yard gain. Our clock is stopped on the field. Looks like we have a WK timeout. Don't go away, band parents. We'll have the Waterford Kettering marching band and color guard out here to entertain uh, 
our big crowd out here tonight at halftime. We'll uh, also be showing that on our cable cast here tonight, uh, along with the cheerleaders and the palm squads for the captains out here. And uh, I know the band parents like it. Very important. It's nice to see all the school spirit that happens at all of our local high schools. And the Comcast very happy to to bring you the very best in local sports and all the kids that surround because it takes more than football to make a beautiful fall evening. These girls are all part of it and so are these, the pom-poms, cheerleaders, the band and, and all the parents and all the teachers that give up their Friday nights year after year to help make this thing happen. Second down and seven. That was a curious call there on first down where the captains are not throwing the football and I would think that they might want to throw it here. What do you think is going on in Mike yeah, Perry's head? Yeah, I think... Uh, Look for, well, Newingham is split out over here along with Adam Mountain, Roy. And here on the shotgun, Morris is looking downfield. Morris over the middle, and the pass is picked. And with his knees on the ground, Kevin Mason will intercept that football with 29 seconds to go, and Clarkston will have time for three Hail Marys, or maybe they'll try something underneath. Well, as uh, quickly as they can uh, strike here, Roy, uh, in their passing game that seems to be working, that's now the 10th interception on the season there for Tim Morris, Roy. He has really struggled throwing the football so far this season. First and 10, Clarkston has a ball at the their own 30-yard line, and up they'll take a knee, and Clarkston has decided that they'd uh, like to accept things the way they are, and... They will go to the locker room as long as the captains are willing to do the same. Final 15 seconds will tick off. Looks like the captains won't call timeout, neither will the Wolves, and that will do it. 19-8 uh, to 8 after our first 24 minutes of play. We'll be back with our second half action in a moment. Right now, let's enjoy our halftime festivities. We'll be back. Our halftime score one more time. Clarkston 9, the captains 8. Let's enjoy halftime. Pizza. Go to Michigan's Best Pizza by the Michigan Restaurant Association. Call and order one of Dolly's seven delicious specialty pizzas, like the Mesquite Grilled Chicken Parmesan Pizza. Get a large round or square pizza for just $9.99. Check your mail for more Dolly's Pizza specials. At Dolly's Pizza, we know what you like. At Dolly's Pizza, we know what you like.
their skirts Kids are bombarded with information these days, and it's up to us to give them the skills to process it all. Now let's talk about this. Cable in the Classroom is a powerful tool. More than 30 cable networks design programs specifically for the classroom. Just set the timer to record. And it's free. No commercials, no viewing requirements. You'll research a region and then represent... And there's a monthly magazine with everything I need to know to make it work. Distinguished representatives, what say you... Cable is giving us a fantastic educational tool. It's up to us to use it. Welcome back to Comcast TV 45 Sports. I'm Bob Montgomery along with Ora Akers in the broadcast booth. A great performance by the Waterford carrying marching band and color guard there at halftime. And the Clarkston Wolves lead this contest 19-8 over the Kettering captains and the Wolves will kick it off to the captains to start this second half. And here we've got it. Our kicker Kevin Mason will do the honors. We've got both Morris and Newingham are deep. Won't matter, the ball is out of bounds. It's kicked that way. And the captains will start off with very good field position from there. Taking a look at some first half stats unofficially, uh, Dan Barth had 13 carries for 85 yards. Dan Rose had three carries for 20 yards. Morris had a carry for three. The running game for Clarkston saw Brad Phelan had 12 carries for 48 yards. Jeff Long had two carries for three. And Fife had two carries for 20. I won't count those kneel downs as yards off. The passing game, we see eight for 19 for Dane Fife in the first half. This kick is going to be taken over again. We haven't had a lot of penalties tonight, Bob. We've only had uh, five total in the ball game, including Clarkston's three for 20 and Kettering's two for 10 yards here tonight. Here comes our kick once again. It's... Marked off once again moments ago against Clarkston. The ball taken as by one of the up man, Dan Bart, the running back. Very good field position. He runs for about 12, 13 yards out to his own 45-yard line as Mitch Hargett, one of the special teamers, is on the stop. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Schimmel, who's with us here to start the second half, our spotter. Bob Montgomery doing color. I'm Roy Akers up here as we bring you week five action in this crossover matchup between the captains and the Wolves. Captains will have Morris, a quarterback, split out to the near side as Newingham. Handoff goes right up the gut. It looks to be about a three-yard run as there we've got it. It looks like Underwood will make the tackle, and that's about a gain of about three, make it four, actually. As Danny Barth there on the carry as he starts off the way he stopped there in the first half. 11 and a half to Whoa, go here in this third quarter. Newingham over to the near side, Mountain over to the far. Our tight end is Nick Reeser, and deep in the backfield, Bart takes that handoff, Bob, picks up a yard or two, but really had nowhere to go. He ran behind McGugan that time, and Justin Dyer, and picks up about a yard as Michael Underwood once again is on the stop. Third down and a long five is what we have here. New players coming in including Armstrong for Waterford Kettering. Checking out Dan Rose for this play on the sequence. This is the initial 
drive of the second half. Here's a deep pitch to Barth. Barth in the backfield is just knocked down and leveled about a yard deep in his own backfield. That time busting through, it looked like Clarkson had Jeremy Houston in there as they also have Jeff Long, and Long has had a monster ball game, Bob. Yeah, really not at the fullback position where he's the fullback on offense, two-way player, but he's had a tremendous ball game on defense tonight, Roy. Conley is the deep player. Our punt is off. Heavy pressure. Clarkston already blocked one, and it really helped them to their second touchdown tonight as the captains will have the Clarkston punt return to move away from it, and the captains will defense 80 yards out of the north goal as Clarkston will be moving from our left to our right this evening. One of the main problems that the, uh, the captains had in the second half of the second quarter, and even on this drive, Bob, is they're taking no time off the clock. Their last three days, yeah, I think, have taken Really, you got to set the tempo offensively on your own side of the ball. Keep Dane Fife over there on the sideline, sitting on the bench and uh, keeping his fanny war or cold on the steel. And here to the near side, we got Fife with the rest of his squad. They work out of the eye to the Wolves. Split out to the near side. They're going to have Maytrot. And here comes the handoff to Phelan. And no, no, it's not Phelan. I believe it's Long. We'll pick up about three. On the stop is Kevin Bagola for the captains. And it's about a two-yard gain as uh, Long not able to gain a lot. Long is one of two two-way players for Clarkston tonight, but his forte is on the defensive side of the football. So far tonight, Roy. 9.47 to go here in this third quarter. Yeah. The captains trailed 7-0 at the end of one. They actually took the lead halfway through the second quarter on a 50-yard run by Barth. But Clarkston whipped off two touchdowns, and that's her scoring. 19-7, oh, the ball is fumbled. I think Clarkston got it back, though. Yeah, it looked like the ball took a nice, fat bounce right back to Dane Fife, and nothing doing. As a matter of fact, Clarkston will lose two yards on that play as the Wolves have fumbled, and for the first time tonight, the captains had a chance for a couple of picks in the first half but didn't come away with anything. It's yeah, I think if they're going to get it going here, defensively, they've got to do something here, Roy, and this is a big play to do it on. And Clarkston with the football here, close to the center of the field at their own 18-yard line. They have a wide out near and a wide out far, and here comes the sweep toss to the outside to Phelan, and Phelan is absolutely wrapped up. Dave McGugan is at least one of the players in there on there, and also Justin Dyer as well as the captain's defensive line has just been making her presence felt from the inside here at the defensive tackle slots. As, as you mentioned earlier, Bob, Clarkson is not really running a whole lot with, with success there to the no, inside. Not in, yeah, not tonight. inside, Roy. They're finding no room inside as McGugan and Dyer and the linebackers, Rushman and J.R. Zapata are filling some of those holes, Roy. Jason Frack is the punter. Newingham is the punt returner for the captains at his own 48. A little bit of a rust, I'll tell you that time. Zapata almost got through, but the ball fielded by the captains. They're going to have great field position. They're in on the Clarkston 40-yard line and trying to cut back against the green. Mike Enderzo busted through and took the cleats out underneath Newingham. Newingham, might, that time, might have been better off just running along the sideline. Yeah, trying to take it upfield that time. That's that old east-west running there, Roy, and because uh, uh, Newingham had already gotten it up to about the 42-yard line before he started to run east-west. No first downs <laughs> for either squad here on this first drive. Kettering uh, with 8.01 to go in the second quarter. Morris back to pass Hello. out of the flat to Newingham. Spins around his man inside the 40. Streams the sideline, still on his feet at the 35. And picks up beautiful yardage. That's not the 35, that's a 25, a 20 yard pickup. Jason Kaiser with the stop, as it looks like Jeff Long once again in there too for Clarkston. He is all over the football and shows well, why there. We'll take a look at it here on replay, Roy. There, that time Newingham gets and breaks the coverage out there by uh, Kevin number Mason. 24, Kevin Mason. And now the captains with a man in motion. That's a tight end reeser. There might have been movement in the line, no call. Bark with the carry will get back to the initial line of scrimmage. Probably not much else. Michael Underwood will come in there and make the stop for the Clarkston Wolves. He's the nose guard for the Big C. 
We'd like to thank, I, I guess our TCI fans up there in Clarkston are going to get a feed of this ball game here uh, this week. We'd like to thank the Clarkston fans uh, for tuning in here to Comcast, the who has the very best in local prep sports, bar none. Well, that's second down and 11, going back and nothing going. Dan Rose stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He might have lost a yard, maybe two, before he's brought down by Nick Zavatsky, one of the two-way players for the Wolves. Both of their inside linebackers, Zavarsky and Long, uh, go. Well, this is something that's ball. really haunted Mike Berry's troops all year, Roy. Third and long situations. And this is when you can blitz the quarterback and get Tim Morris. Mike Berry's made an adjustment. He's brought his quarterback into the shotgun position. Yeah, Morris back to pass. Morris scrambling has Newingham. It's complete, but he's out of the initial line of scrimmage. It's nearly steps through the lasso at the 25, down to the 24. Picks up only a couple as he caught that ball at the line of scrimmage, and Clarkson sniffs it out. As Jay Richardson, no, 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 Mike Entersall there with a stop there for the big C. Let's take a look at it, Roy. This time you see Morris out of his shotgun looking for somebody downfield. Cutting across was Nick Reeser downfield, but that time Morris couldn't get it downfield too. And here comes the field goal opportunity for the captains. Quinn will try it. Here comes the swinging gate. Uh, don't let the lamb through as the captains will put 40 it down. 40-yard attempt here, Roy. And he's got the leg. And the kick is wide, though, and our game score remains 19-8. So the captains take two and a half minutes off the clock that time. They had a tremendous field position. Yeah, that would have really... been a big field goal if the captains could have got this contest back within eight points instead of 11, Roy. No but telling what could happen here. Doesn't happen. Some of the top games of the week, Berkeley versus Pontiac Northern happening tonight. Uh, that game was considered the top game in Oakland County for action. Wisner Stadium has two of the top games in the county this weekend. They have the Boys Bowl, which will be traditionally, as always, played against Birmingham Brother Rice, Detroit Catholic Central. Back to pass fight. Sidesteps the captain's pressure, passes it out to Maytrot. Maytrot will have the ball for about a five-yard gain. A late whistle as the captain's crowd this fell out. Brian Rush makes the initial contact, backed up by Adam Mountain, and a gain of five. I like but, Fife. That yeah, was poised. But that was way. poised, and that was one of the things. He just sidestepped a couple of players, kept his head about him, looked downfield, found his receiver, and picked up great yardage on first down. And that is a, make that a seven-yard gain. The officials like that one uh, quite a bit as Maytrot gained seven yards, not five, as they give him a little bit more. Uh, they, he stretched out the football and got a little bit more. 4.58 to go. Our clock is moving. Clarkston. From the moving from our left to right up the near hash mark, rolling out Fife. Fife with all kinds of room. First down yardage and chain splits the captain's secondary and will pile over at about this 42 yard line. Super grab that time for about 14 yards. The captains will come on through. It looks like Kevin Bagola and Kyle Walker are in there. And Fife on the naked bootleg is really That's dangerous. really the first time that we've seen him take that, Roy, and take off and start running upfield with Well, it. no, he's done that a couple times back in the first half. He had a 12 and an 8-yarder out of the naked bootleg. But that's the first time he split over to the far side before he's come over here to the near side. Okay. He's bootleg here to the near with the tight end behind him. That time he did it with uh, the flanker and a little different move. 4.19 to go. Sweep toss over to Phelan. Phelan with first, nope, not first down yards. That was first down. A three-yard gain as Justin Dyer will make the stop as now Clarkston start to methodically control things again. Phelan had 43 yards and five carries, but check this out. He had, after 12 carries, he only had another five yards, so really uh, the second quarter was not Brad's quarter. Second down and six. Clarkston with the football with 350 to go here in this quarter number three. The Wolves with a 19 to eight lead as they're here on the road in this crossover action. May trot over to the near, over to the far appears to be Frack, and this time Fife will get rid of it, and the ball is all completed to Long. Long the bowling ball down to the Kettering 43. That was super. Fife took the hit that time and has a pass complete for 17 yards. Aaron Card on the stop or with the hit on the stop that time. And Clarkston moves the chains for the 13th time tonight. Fife once again. Dave Fife was kind of slow getting up from that hit, Roy, but uh, he's a tough competitor. He's still in there. He didn't want to be taken out. 
Freck to the near, over to the far is Conley, and fight for the naked bootleg is stiff that time. He's going to lose 13 yards. Brian Rush put the mustard on him. What a sack, and the captains get through for the first time tonight. As what a stick that time by Brian Rush. And that's going to make it second down. And let's take a look at it here, Roy, before we uh, go to that uh, live action. Big stick in there by Brian Rush. Comes untouched all the way through his uh, outside linebacker position. The officials were kind and said Fife only lost eight, not 13. And here out of the play action, Fife will step away. Luzu making the chase. Pass is tipped up in the air and incomplete. Two captains, including Jarris, had a shot to make it. Mountain Wall, or not, no, that wasn't Mountain. Hello? Seemed, it was Aaron Seemed Carr to be, with the shot. <laughs> Seemed and, to be a lot of contact. Is this thing down. on? Seemed to be a lot of contact down there, Roy, um, along the sidelines uh, on that pass play. Could have been a flag thrown, but uh, officials said no. I think everybody was going up for it on a jump ball type situation. 232 is what we have to play here in this third quarter. No score has been put on the board, but we have a 19-8 score overall. Matrit now split out and in motion to the near. He's got Fife looking off him. Now looking back to him, and the pass is incomplete. That time, Aaron Carr, who's really had a nice drive, was the closest captain's player. Conley was the intended target. And Clarkston will have a fourth down and almost, well, about 18 here, and they're going to give it up. Good defense by the captains. That, they just got to get their offense in gear. Yeah, or the defense is going to have to step up, make a big play. Let's see if they don't send some people here to uh, try to block this punt, but no, it looks like they got their coverage. Uh. Yeah. Frack uh, will get it off very easily. The captains will walk away from it as it takes a captain's hop. Oh, Clarkston, look at them. They're takes uh, skips through four different players, and Kettering will have very good field position as that was a poor punt. It was only about 20 yards and ended up being about 15. Make that 18 yards after it takes a fat bounce the captain's way. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Waterford Kettering captains. Next week, they're at Seaholm. On October 18th, a Friday, they're at Pontiac Central. That'll be another TV, Comcast TV game. October 25th, finds, finds them at West Bloomfield. Wrap around. Oh, the fake toss. It's going to go out to Barth. Barth has got very little room to run. He may lose a yard as that time Wong has busted through to make the stop. Also, Evans and Conley in there, too. It's a loss of one. That play... Whenever you do the option on the short side of the field, I really think it's destined to not make it because that time it uh, looked like the captains might not have made the best decision. Morris, I think, got rid of that football a little bit late. A minute 45, our clock continues to run here as this third quarter has seen a lot of runs and time is really ticking off quickly. In motion is Reeser. Morris is looking for him. The pocket's collapsing. Pass is overthrown. Reeser was the target as Phelan was the secondary safety that was back there, but uh, that pass will fall incomplete. It's now third and 10. And of course, on November 1st, you have the big crosstown rivalry. Uh, that'll be back over here against Waterford Mott. Captains, once again, not taking much time off the clock. The, you say, and that's an excellent strategy, you gotta keep the cannon off here, the field. Here again, Roy, third and long. And back in the shotgun is Timmy Morris. The two deep coverage there on the outside. Receiver Morris over the middle. He's got Reeser. Oh, and the ball goes through the numbers. And what a stick because waiting for him was uh, Jason Keisler. And make that Keisler. Keisler, the free safety. Boy, was he licking them lamb chops that time as he caught Reeser over the middle. But Reeser could have hauled it in maybe. Take a look at it here, Roy. That time, good coverage by the captains to uh, protect Morris. And I think Reeser came up on Kaiser and... Uh... Well, light pressure by the Clarkston. That punt is off and it will take a captain's hop once again and Kettering will push Clarkston back after a nice roll back to their own 38 yard line. And with 1.17 to go in quarter number three, the Wolves, once again, will have pretty decent field position to try to do something here. Their fans uh, brought all kinds of banners here tonight. A couple of them have been torn down because uh, they're kind of insulting. I guess the kids had, uh, had 
That's what happens. You give the kids a little bit of Kryolon, they can uh, make all kinds of stuff here on these banners. But uh, putting the insults, uh, insulting Waterford for not being able to afford bleachers. So back to pass on the double pump. The pass is complete, but bouncing off easily is Endrazol. Endrazol still on his feet. Shouldn't have gained more than three yards, so gain about eight as the captains, Adam Mountain, uh, finally just hung on for dear life and brought him down. That's the first time Andrezal has made a catch here tonight. Second down, about three yards to go for the first down. Here, you see the pass out here. Look at Andrezal. Just missed tackle there by Mountain that time on Andrezal. Well, he just bounced off everybody. Holy smokes, the guy is like he had 30,000 watts going through him. Fife getting rid of it. The pass is over. Throw! and almost picked off by Mountain. Brown was the intended target. And, you know, I don't understand something. The captains could have three or four picks tonight, but they're just that, not that, I think that's them. Adam Mountain's second time, Roy, that he could have uh, gotten a pick there. That time, Adam Mountain's going to hobble off over here along the sidelines. There you see it on the camera. And that time, just cramped up there. So they'll try to work out some of those cramps. And that'll bring in a new defensive back to uh, bring in... Uh, uh, Morris there at the corner. 32 seconds is what we have left on the clock as we finish up this third quarter. The Wolves with a 19-8 lead over the captains. The Clarkston attack will have a powerhouse backfield, a tight end and a wide out. Phelan behind a couple of blocks. That time might have run into his own man. He certainly ran into a couple of captain players, including David Rushman. Also when there was Rush, Zapata back there as well. Rose in there and with 17 seconds to go. Actually, our clock's spinning off. No time is going off. That will probably be it unless uh, somebody wants to call a needless timeout. So Phelan got nothing on that last carry, and that'll do it. After 36 minutes, once again, Clarkston goes into the fourth quarter, leading by 11 here on the road in this division crossover here in the Mighty Oak. We got fourth quarter action coming up in a moment. You are watching the Comcast Sports Network. Pizza. Go to Michigan's Best Pizza by the Michigan Restaurant Association. Call and order one of Dolly's seven delicious specialty pizzas, like the Mesquite Grilled Chicken Parmesan Pizza. Get a large round or square pizza for just $9.99. Check your mail for more Dolly's Pizza specials. At Dolly's Pizza, we know what you like. At Dolly's Pizza, we know what you like. Patterson and Company, exploring the challenges, issues, and opportunities facing Oakland County as we approach the dawn of the 21st century. Watch this award-winning program on Comcast Channel 45. And the Clarkston Wolves will punt it away to start this fourth quarter, Roy. Newingham deep for Kettering, will field, oh, he fumbles it, and the Wolves have covered. <laughs> Although everybody's fighting over it, and the officials are now satisfied, and I think they're going to give it to the Wolves. I think uh, we saw a lot of pigskin there for a few moments, but I think the Wolves have got it. Well, the Wolves do, the officials like it. And Clarkston has got their second turnover of the ball game. The first was on a blocked punt. And yeah. actually their third. They got an interception at the end of the first half. Travis Pegg, the deep player. And let me ask you, Bob, was it smart to field the punt there with everybody beating down on your face? Well, that time, you know, you just got to put your hand up, signal the fair catch. You can't worry about the hit that's going to be laid on you. You got to just make the catch. Well, if you make the fair catch and somebody puts a lick on you, it's a penalty and down. you're going 15 yards up your own field. And now Clarkston has the football again. Two wide outs to the near, including Conley and Frack. They're working out of the eye with a handoff to Phelan. Phelan at the 20. Got nice yarders inside the 10. He'll score. And Clarkston from 25 yards out. Has increased their lead to 25 to 8. Bob, just like that, Clarkston has had that turnovers thing, yeah. tonight, and two of them have gotten touchdowns quickly. Points off of turnovers, and both times that they've turned it over, 
or giving it up. Uh, they didn't actually turn it over on the punt attempt. I mean, that got uh, stuck, I call a 40 yard turn. It's a field. turnover. Yeah. Either way. Turnover or downs, but what we're getting back to is the Wolves have uh, taken advantage of the captain's mistakes tonight. Captains have played a very strong game defensively. It's just been offensively that they have really struggled this year as the ball is spotted on the field. Mason gets the spot and the kick is up. Clarkson has said, forget about these uh, passing attempts for two. They will go for it. And so with 11.43 to play in this ball game, our game score 26 to eight, which is Let's take a look at it. Here you'll see Phelan. That time he's able to get outside the tackles that time there, Roy, and uh, pounds it down there for the six. Taking a look at the Clarkston uh, schedule upcoming here. Next week, they're at Troy Athens. That should be a pretty good game there, Roy. On the 18th, they'll find them against home against Rochester. But I think the one everybody's been circling on their calendar is on the 25th of October. That's at home against Troy. And on the uh, 1st of November, they'll go to uh, Lake Orient. But I think uh, this team isn't looking past this game, obviously to that November or that October 25th date when uh, oh. Troy and Clarkston will probably play for the championship here in Division One. No, Clarkston has not steamrolled the captains in this 18-point lead. It's been captains' mistakes that have been the difference here tonight, as it has been our our, for our second broadcast that we did. This ball takes a crazy hop. The captains will fall on it. This time the running back bar will come back to the football and it's now first and 10 for the captains as we play but 19 seconds here of this uh, fourth quarter. And it's an 18 point, 26 to eight, Clarkston lead against captains here at home. Well, next Monday night, you'll see Pontiac Northern and Waterford Mott square off, Roy. And uh, I guess uh, if you're a Waterford uh, fan, you're looking for some revenge against the Northern Huskies as they came in and put a pretty good licking on the captains. And a handoff will go to the halfback Dan Barth, and Barth will actually lose a yard as Mitch Hargett breaks through. Hargett's name, we haven't called a whole lot. He's one of the reserves that have kind of come on in and get some playing time. Barth, once again, will lose the yard, make that two yards. Tonight, uh, 85 yards and 18 carries. He's got the same amount of yards that he had after 14. He just hasn't gotten anything lately. Morris back to pass, has Reeser. Very close to the first down marker. I think his momentum might have carried him out. He actually caught that one for about uh, 11 yards. I think he needed 12, and it's going to make a third down and a yard. Well, that time Nick Reeser came back to the ball, Roy. Let's take a look at it, and I think you'll see that uh, Reeser this time comes back working along the sidelines and gets out in the open in the flat there. And that's good to see because the captains have needed to come back and help Morris out on, and it hasn't happened as much as they've needed to this season, or maybe that's a sign of things to come. Here comes the handoff, straight up the gut. I, the captains have really got nothing. The running back uh, this time, Barth, might have got about a half a yard that time, but it's going to make it fourth and short. And if I'm Kettering, they got to go for you it. got to go mean. for it, I guess. Short one yard to go. Fourth down and about a, about a half a yard, a little bit more than the length of a football right now. Ten and a half minutes is what we have to go. Our clock continues to move as it spins toward our final countdown here in the fourth quarter. See if Morris doesn't go over Steve Robinette. Oh, and here's the pitch out. Uh-oh, and... I don't know. That's a busted play. The captains might have got the first down. I can't even tell you what happened. I thought the ball was pitched out or fumbled. Yeah, I think it was first. It was a fake up the middle off the fullback, and I think he was looking to pitch it out to Barth. But either way, Morris will pick up the first down, right? In first downs, if you could measure a football game, this game would be close. The Wolves have 14 to, to Kettering's 10. But... Uh, Two big mistakes have basically blown this ball game open. If it wasn't for the mistakes, it'd be like a 12-8 game right now. And here back to pass, you'll have Morris. Morris out of the pocket to Mountain. Mountain over close to midfield, still on his feet, and will fight from his own 48 to midfield. A beautiful 18-yard reception. Boy, you got to love it. Jason Ostrom and Brad Connolly put the hammer 
to that time, Adam out. Morris that time had the poise. He was like a Dane Fife back there, sat back in his pocket, knew he was going to take the big hit, but hung in there and had Adam Mountain come across and uh, picked up the first down. The captains with the football, the, it will be officially spotted at the round 49. And with the powerhouse back, no, nope, no, nope, it's the shotgun. He got Morris out of the flat to Newingham. Ball is tipped up. It could have been picked off by Conley, who stepped up that time in front of Newingham. And the Wolves that time uh, might have had a shot for an intercept. Second and 10, our clock stops with 9.33 to go. I don't think you're going to see Air Fife for much of the rest of this game. I, I would think that Clarkson will keep the ball on the ground and try to chew this one up and just uh, make it a game of attrition on this very cool, not no humidity in the air whatsoever. Out of the shotgun, you got Morris uh, over the flat, and the ball's tipped up three or four times, and incomplete. Ball batted up that time by Nate Skipton. Brad Connolly might have got his mitts on it. And it's yeah, now third and ten. Long had a shot on it. That ball was like a pinball, Roy. Take a look at it here. You see Morris that time has plenty of time. Long initially had the tip. Conley had a shot at it. Yeah, it was a bumper, extra ball, and tilt. And there you have it. <laughs> 9.27. That's what we have left. Our clock has stopped on the field is following that incomplete pass. Taking the deep drop. Morris going downfield. His target is going to be Reeser who had it the numbers and dropped it. Oh, that hurts. Fourth down, captains. Fourth and ten. Reeser had that ball. And you know, and those, those were the kind of plays that the captains two years ago were making when they took a run at the state playoffs, Roy. Passes like that would have been caught, and uh, this year they're just not being caught. Yeah, it's been frustrating, and that's high school football. So you can't really get on the kids for that. They're pros and getting paid. That's a different thing, but the kids are doing the best they can. Rolling out here, you got Morris uh, looting the rush, and underneath has the ball complete to, to complete the Newingham, who stretches out for the first down. What a grab. He only had, he should have only had about five, but that time spun right around Enderzal that time, and Chris Evans, and will get six. Well, you gave that to Newingham. That was Adam Mountain, Roy. Was that who, Mountain? Who made that play. Nice. Take a look at it here. You see Morris scrambles out to his right, and Adam Mountain that time came back to the ball. He knows what he's got to do. Super play. So it's been clutch, not consistency, but clutch for the captains. Rose with the carry and kind of does a 360 and finally ends up in Al Long's arms for a gain of six. Chris Evans also in there on the stop. Second down, and the officials are only going to give him four, not six. They say his knees hit before he actually outstretched his arms. And with 8.34 to go here in this ball game, the captains are on the march, but they need a strike more sooner than later. Back to pass, quick drop over to Newingham. Close to first down yards, escapes a tackler and gets down inside the Clarkston 28-yard line. Gains about eight yards as Chris Evans couldn't wrap him up till the very end. And Jeff Longno will put the hammer to him, and that's a nice grab. Yeah, that elusiveness of uh, Justin Newingham that time, Roy, showed on that play. 11 for 20 tonight for Timmy Morris. Easily the best offensive show I've seen this fella have. Way to go, Timmy. 8.06 to go. Our clock continuing to roll. Mountain to the near. Reeser in motion. Going the other way to Mountain. The pass is hauled in by him. Gets to the 25 before he meets his man. Gets three yards before Nate Skipton will bring him down. Three yards. Second down and seven. Second down, about seven yards to go for Terry. And you see it here, Roy. They're a little out to, in the flat pass there. Picks up uh, three on the play. That's Adam Mountain. Second down and seven. The captains trail 26-8 to eight with seven and a half to play in our contest. Mountain to the near side. Morris is going on a timing pattern to Newingham. And Newingham holds it in. And he'll score. Touchdown. The captains from 25 yards out. 26 to 14 now. And WK will show us what they got with a swinging gate. Bob Captain's best offensive play. Newingham uh, showed us what he had back in their Kimball ball game. Yeah, it's just a little hitch and go there, Roy. 
that time, let's, I don't know if we get, we've got it from our replay yet, uh, do we, Matt? Okay, we'll show that uh, little hitch and go there by uh, yeah, we'll have Justin right Newenham right after this kick here, Roy. 26-14, it's a 12-point ball game. The captains have Newingham and Mountain to the near. Morris is looking for him, avoids the rush. We'll get it into the end zone. The extra point will be seen. The two-point conversion is good underneath the mountain. And 26-16, and all of a sudden, we got a ball game. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, touchdown grab by Justin Newingham here. Morris this time has to scramble, pumps once, and Newingham beat his man cleanly that time to take it in for the score. So now that's the first touchdown pass tonight for Tim Morris, and now we've got ourselves a 10-point difference. You go, you yeah, get I, I think I think kick here I think no? I'll, Well, that's a possibility, but I think you got to rely now on Newingham, Mountain, and Reese are your uh, receivers out there, Roy, to get you back into this ball game. Defensively, I know the captains really would like to have something happen here defensively, a turnover, uh, something. And the captains will attempt the kick. Here comes Quinn to kick off. Here comes the good hands team is out here. And it's deep. The captains don't want to screw around with it right now. This ball will be fielded by Clarkston's Johnny Hodges. And not a lot of room that time as John Hodges will be tackled at his own 23. Uh, good his good name choice, I think, there. Just kick it away there, Roy. Try to pin him back deep and uh, make him go the length of the football field here. And now put them back on the defense to see if they can't come up with a big play. Well, now you might have just brought Clarkston's balanced attack back into the ball game. I'm going to probably edge the run to the pass, but I think you'll see Fife uh, cock his arm back at least one time out of the out of the three downs here. If Kettering hadn't scored, I would have totally kept it on the ground, but Clarkston will have to keep the captains off balance as Clarkston still has a 10-point lead midway through the fourth. Here on the handoff, Phelan will this time run into the captains. Number 35, who's not listed on our roster. That's a gain of about five. Is that what we got? Joe Morse? Well, Joe Morse, I got him for 36 down there. So second down and five is Clarkston keeping it on the ground. We have 6.48 to go here in this game. Frack is here to the near and over to the far. We have Conley up over center is our quarterback, Fife, and Fife might have been changing the play on the wraparound handoff. Phelan's got first down yardage, fumbles the ball, and the captains have fallen on it, and they have got the first turnover against the Wolves tonight. See, that's defensively. I knew that's what um, Al Duff had to do here, Roy. He wanted his defensive troops to come up and make a big stick, and they do, and turn it over. Aaron Card recovers the fumble as Fife is fumbles the ball. Let's look at this one. Failing this time. Jarris that time. I think Jarris is the one that knocks the ball out there, Roy. Yeah. Ryan Jarris. And so that ball is fumbled by Phelan, and he loses it. That wasn't Fife. It was Phelan that lost it. We do have a man in motion, and I think the captains will be whistled for the infraction. The legal motion against WK, first and 15 for the captains as they will be marched back to their own 41. They got to get to just outside the 25-yard line for the first down. I think it's an obvious pass situation here, Roy, but look for maybe a little draw play for Barth up the middle. That should work here. And here back to pass on the play action. You got Morse over the top uh, to Reeser, I believe, who's very close to first down yardage as Jeff Long puts the hammer to Mr. Reeser, failing in there as well, and it's a, about a 14-yard completion. It's just shy, second down and a long one. Well, we talked about if you're going to get back in this ball game, I think it's going to have to come down to the passing arm of Tim Morris along the Newingham Mountain and Reeser. And off to Barth. He's in the backfield, runs into the referee, still on his feet. The Clarkston 15, and he gains 12 more. Chris Evans with the help great, from the backfield. Great play on second down. down and short that time. Good play calling by Mike Berry that time, Roy. Part of good play calling is player execution. The captains mismanaged the clock badly in the second quarter. 
And when Clarkston had two touchdowns in the span of like 58 football seconds, but they have certainly taken advantage. Good play selection. The receivers are catching the football and a timely fumble recovery. Morris escapes the rush. Morris running out. Morris has got to get rid of it. Throws it for the end zone. It was in front of Reeser. And maybe he was trying to complete that to Reeser. Maybe he wasn't. Yeah. He had to get rid of Either it. Either way, he had to get rid of it. Good, good play there by Tim Morris. Kept his poise back there scrambling. Yeah, and that was Evans that busted through that time. I'd like to thank John Schimmel for doing our spotting for us here tonight. Second down and 10. Coaching over at St. Florian Football. We've done a few of their games when they played Our Lady in Division D a few years back. Hand off to Barth. Not a lot of room that time. A couple of yards. Jeff Long, who's really had a very strong second half, makes the stop. Barth uh, tonight has 100 yards and 21 carries. Well, two plays here, third and 10, but two plays, I would imagine here, Roy, to pick up this first down. Clock is rolling. The captains would like to at least get some points right here. Points, I would go for the field goal if they don't make it. Morris rolling it out. The ball is tipped up. He actually threw that into the Clarkston lineman. Chris Evans was the player that had the ball hit his back. I go for the field goal right here, don't you? Yeah, I would. I'd uh, kick the ball. Well, it, makes it, a it makes it a seven-point game. Uh, yeah, either way, 10. you're going to have to have two scores here. So pick up one of the scores right now. up scoring if they get the touchdown well, or get a field goal or I mean if they make the first down and score obviously that's the best thing that can happen yeah, right now how big a block was it back there in the first quarter when uh, the captains tried that field goal away back in the first quarter yeah here, the right? swinging gate and saw their own linemen line up too close to yeah, the I'm kicker yeah I'm just not a real big proponent of the Yeah, they need two scores, and you don't want to take off too much more time off the clock. It is a timeout, captains, and the brain trust will all sit together right here. Let's think of the positives and negatives if the captains decide to go for six or three. They need 10 yards. They got great field penetration if they... If they end up scoring, if they get the touchdown well, or get a field goal, or I mean, if they make the first down and score, obviously that's the best thing that can happen. Yeah, right for. now, how big a block was it back there in the first quarter when uh, the captains tried that field goal away back in the first quarter? Yeah, here, the right? swinging gate and saw their own linemen line up too close to yeah, the Yeah, I'm kicker. just not a real big proponent of that. I think they should get their men, get them in position, and then kick the field goal. Let's go! Well, we'll see here. Uh, what Mike Barry's going to call here very soon here. I think some coaches know what to do with the swinging gate. I'm not too and, sure. And, if the and they got this are... all charted out, too, I would imagine here, Roy. Under five minutes, if the situation and the score is this, what are they going to do? Captains are going for it. They're going to, oh, no, they're not. They're not going for it. The kicker right now, Aaron Card or Aaron Quinn. Here. It should be Card. That's Quinn. Quinn has the ball down, the kick is up, and it's good! And the captains trail by uh, 7, 26 to 19, and they'll kick it off. That ball was up from 31 yards, and the captains trail 26 to 19. And Mary Lou, the barn's on fire here at home with 4.48 to go. Well, definitely Kurt Richardson has not been able to put his second team back into this ball game, Roy, as uh, he's going to have to keep his first stringers out there because they're in a contest here. 
We'll take a short timeout. You're watching Comcast TV 45 Sports. I'm Bob Montgomery along with Roy Akers. We'll be back right after this. When you need a mortgage, you need answers. That's why so many consumers are relying on Roy Akers at American Mortgage Services for their home financing needs. Smart shoppers know how much they can afford before they shop and then get a firm commitment on it. When you need a mortgage, Roy Akers has the answers to your questions. For fast, dependable service from a trained professional, call Roy Akers toll-free today at 1-888-265-7500. Evening and weekend hours are available for your convenience. We're back. That time the captains didn't try the razzle-dazzle swinging gate play and the field goes up and good. Uh, it's too important to play, I think, to screw around with that. On an extra point's one thing, but yeah. not on a field you know, goal. When they tried that on that uh, in that first quarter field goal, they tried that same play. And I think that the linemen lined up in their own the backfield. Block. The captains will kick it off. Quinn deep, and Phelan will feel it back at his own five. He backs up to his own two. Has not a lot of room. He, oh, he sidesteps the captains. Gets in the open field. He's loose with Quinn to beat, and Quinn gets him to tuck it in at his own 40. And Phelan made a great run, and a very, very late flag is down on our field. Yeah, I don't know if that came with a face mask. I think, oh, nope. That's going to go against the Wolves, so that's going to push him back. A very late hold here against Clarkston. They will see it as a spot foul. That's too bad because Phelan really made something out of nothing. A 10-yard penalty clicked off here against the Wolves. Four penalties for 30 yards tonight. Clarkston has the football. Their offensive line includes Olofsson, Zavatsky, Guilford, Clement, and Eberhardt. Blundy spells Eberhardt periodically. The Wolves with it off the near hash mark at their own 28-yard line. They've got it, first and 10, a wraparound handoff. Phelan with one man to beat in the secondary. Well, beat him, but the captains will have containment as that time both Rose and also might have been Armstrong with the stops. So Rose and Armstrong, and that's a pickup of about 15. Boy, Phelan got out in front of the well, line they're, they're linebackers. Defensively, they were just lined up to stop the play outside the tackles, and they just hit the quick hitter right up the middle there, Roy. Nice gain of about 15. And here comes the Wolves. They've got it as they have it first and 10 once again at their own 43. Split out now to the near side for them will be Frack. And here comes a handoff to Phelan, who's close to first down yardage again. And he'll gain about eight. As that time, Rush is in on the stop, and also Jarris as Phelan is uh, picking up some key yardage. And Phelan, a smart runner that time when he came through the line there, Roy. Two arms on that football, and I think we're going to have an additional uh, pe or penalty on this it's play. It's a face mask. Face mask, and it's going to be a big one, Roy. 15 it's yards. It's a 15-yarder. That will create a the 16th first down tonight for the Clarkston Wolves. They have picked up on that play 23 yards, 15 on the penalty, 8 on the run, and with 3.45 to play, the Wolves are getting ready to pull the ice out of the freezer, and uh, they'll start stirring their drink if they score here. They could ice this yeah. ball game as captains work very now hard Now this is tonight. when you need your defense to step up and shut down. Two receivers over to the far, Clarkston out of the eye. Fife on the wraparound handoff, Phelan once again has inside running room. Down to the captain's 25 and a gain of five. Justin Dyer, the left defensive tackle, making the stop. So now the captain's not having any inside pressure, pulling everybody outside or uh, playing the percentages, and they're starting to lose it a little bit. 3.05 to go in this game. And that's where uh, J.R. Zapata and Dave Rushman, Roy, they're going to come up and stop and uh, fill some of those uh, holes right up the middle here. Clarkston will have split out over to the far side, both Brown and Conley. They work out of the eye with Phelan and Long. Long is the fullback. And Fife now on the wraparound handoff to Phelan. And that time Phelan saw instant pressure from Danny Rose. Also in there too was, is that Juan Salazar? One of the uh, reserves has come in here and it's a gain of one. Phelan has 21 carries for 110 yards this evening. Third down and four, 2.24 to go here in this contest. 
Frack to check in for the Wolves. Stay tuned for our post-game show. It could happen right away, or barring a miracle, we might hit COT. Who knows? It's a seven-point Clarkston lead here on the road. They got it. Phelan cuts back to the middle. He looked like he might have had his shoestrings pulled out and might have been lassoed as Rushman will make the stop, and the captains call timeout with a minute 58 in football time left here in this game after a two-yard gain by Brett. Very entertaining contest. Yeah, this is this is going to be a great one coming down the stretch here with a minute 58 left, Roy. And this is going to be a big play. Fourth down and four here for the Clarkston Wolves. Obviously, they're going to probably go for it here. If the captains can turn it over on downs, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I wouldn't... I think if I was the Wolves, I would try to go for it with maybe a little bit of a draw here, a little draw a little play here, action, sprint play. draw type thing. That's probably. I don't think that's a bad play, even if it doesn't work. The captains will have less than two minutes to do something. The captains do not have a big strike offense. They have a a ball control offense at best. They have struck with some big plays. I mean, there was that one big run earlier tonight that was uh, pulled in by by uh, Dan Barth. Yeah, Barth had that 50-yard run earlier in the second quarter when the captains had their only lead of this contest. They did lead at 8-7. Clarkston whipped off, though, the next 18 points in this ball game. Like that 19. Fife up over center, could be trying to draw a snap count. Fife on the rollout, Fife still with it. He's, he could get the first down on his lonesome, but goes underneath and Clarkston hauls it in. The big reception by Andrazil, and Andrazil will have a first down as Adam Mountain puts the shoulder pad to him, and Clarkston with a minute 50 to go is very close to finishing things tonight. Yeah, they're getting ready to drive that uh, nail into the coffin here, Roy. Well, they move the chains following that first down with a minute 49 to go. Brian Jarris, though, on that play came up and had a big hit and almost knocked that ball out, Roy. 17 first downs tonight for the visitors. They got the powerhouse backfield with a minute 49 to go. Two tight ends and a handoff will go. I'm not sure who it's to. That ball was handed off in a hurry. Yeah, well, it was failing. Should have known it. Gets from the seven down to the three and a gain of four. Our clock continues to move to a minute 32 to go. We're moving to our final destination. And the either, either way, if I mean, if the Clarkston Wolves take it in here, Roy, um, you know, hats off to them. This is an impressive drive to close this ball game here. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Clarkston is definitely a high caliber football team. They didn't play their best game tonight. The captains didn't either, but. All things being equal, uh, Clarkston is uh, coming out here on top. A couple more yards for Phelan. The Jarris makes a stop for WK. But the big thing here tonight is uh, I think Kettering played a very spirited ball game. I think uh, they had a couple very short drives. That block punt really set the tone in the second quarter when the captains gave Clarkston a short field, only 11 yards to work with, and then had that big big gainer in for the touchdown. That really turned things around here tonight. Yeah, and then you had the penalty there with the face mask that marked it off 15 yards. That's led to this uh, drive so far, too. Yeah, it's... I, I The thing I've been impressed with tonight, if I had players of the game for for Clarkston tonight, I would have to give it to, uh, to Phelan. I, I mean, sorry, Dane, but uh, I'd have to give it to Phelan because he's ran some really tough yards tonight. Fife has stepped around the rush quite a bit, hasn't had his best night passing. On the defensive side of the football, uh, for the Wolves, I think that the, about the best player out there has been Jeff Wong. has just been super out there. Chris Evans has looked very good, too, at the outside linebacker slot. Uh, for the captains, offensively, I have to go with the quarterback tonight. I like Timmy Morse has passed for 50% tonight, of well above average for him. And, and uh, Ben Barth had a good game, too, tonight. He sure has. And defensively, we'll check that for you in a moment. I've been at four to play. Clarkston with the ball at the Kettering four, and they'll power in touchdown. There's the ice. Clarkston will pound it out. They have a 32 to 19 lead with a little under a minute to go here in this contest. 
a big run. Who got that run? I That was the mass of humanity that time. A quick hitter from four yards out. Four scores here in the fourth quarter. We've had a field goal and now three touchdowns. One by the captains, two by Clarkston as the extra point will be attempted by Kevin Mason. The ball is down and the kick will split the uprights. So I won't have for sure who actually got that, but our game score is now 33 to 19. Well, don't go away at the end of this ball game. Roy Akers will be down on the field with his post-game show. And uh, Roy, I imagine you're going to want to try to grab somebody there from Clarkston to uh, get their we'll comments on We'll try to talk to players, game. I think, on both sides of the football. Defensively for the captains, uh, as much as I like, there's several players I like, but I think Jarris has been Ryan tremendous Ryan Jarris had a whale of a ball game out Adam there. Adam Mountain's had a good game, too, in the secondary tonight. But there's a lot of guys uh, tonight. Do Dwyer's been super here for the captain. So yeah. Clarkston played very well, and so have the captains. I guess we have a overbrimming parking lot out there, and some of the fans are already uh, trying to get home in time to enjoy the rest of this evening, as this parking lot is always tough to get out of. Kick is a little squibber, and the captains Rushman, or make that rush, will fall on it. And the captains will have it at their own 47 with 59 seconds to go here in this contest. A superb ball game is what we had out here tonight. Bob, I'll let you take it up for a okay. final minute. Well, next Monday night, uh, tune in to Comcast TV 45 Sports as the Waterford Mock Corsairs will go over to the house at Wisner to take on the Pontiac Northern Huskies. And this time, Adam Mountain from Morris completes it out for another first down here. That'll stop the clock with 51 seconds left here. And right now, here you're trying to send in some plays that uh, perhaps will help next week as uh, Kettering captains next week travel to, I believe that's, uh, let me check my schedule here. Next week they travel to uh, Birmingham Seahome. After that, uh, the captains will be back on TV and that'll be the October 18th game over at Wisner Stadium against the Pontiac Central Chiefs. Their last TV game, I'll find them November 1st, back here at home against the Corsairs. A great game played here by the captains tonight, and uh, we can see why now the Clarkston Wolves are ranked somewhere past intercepted that time by Brad Bailey for the Clarkston Wolves to uh, end this ball game here. But I can see why now that the Clarkson Wolves, they have it here on replay, replay as Tim Morris throws his second interception of the night. They're just trying to scramble and trying to find somebody uh, <coughs> open there. But I can see now why the Clarkson Wolves are ranked as high as uh, some polls have them uh, third in Class AA in the state. It's been an impressive team so far that we've seen here tonight. Fife will take a knee. That should end. Uh, that should be the final play of our ball game. I'd like to thank uh, our director tonight, Matt Latham, and the crew that's uh, down in the truck. We have uh, Larry Gavette handling the video, James Ross on replay, Sue Gavette on audio, Gabe Niemeyer, Steve Campbell on the handheld camera, Joshua D. Bowering up top, Henry Barron uh, working up top in the stands, field audio, Matt Whale, production assistant, ben, Vicki Matthews, like to thank John Schimmel coming out to the spot tonight, and uh, there you see it, the final score, 33 to 19, and a uh, very good ball game played by both of these squads here tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this. Our post-game show, we'll find Roy Akers down on the field. We'll find out who Roy is able to talk to tonight.
trespassing can be deadly. Don't wreck your life. Stay off the tracks. All right, with us here on our post-game show, Mr. Long and Mr. Fife. First off, a line, this is a, one of the Clarkson's two two-way players tonight. Uh, tell you what, you played a super ball game. You really broke up a lot of the captain's drives tonight. and looked like the Wolves just had an... I didn't know if the 3-4 would work against uh, against Kettering, but it sure did tonight. You plugged a lot of holes. Thanks a lot. We, uh, we played hard tonight. We knew Kettering was going to be a, a big game. It's a big rivalry. Something that hasn't happened in a few years. I remember the last time I was on this field, we lost seven to six, and just came up big tonight. Okay, I tell you what. Taking a look, uh, uh, I know you guys got to make it quick. Uh, Dane, you were super out there tonight. I thought you did a nice job. I don't think this was your best passing game out here tonight, but I think you guys uh, did a nice job of mixing a pass and a run and kept Kettering off balance. Well, I think a lot of the bad passing could be credited to their blitz. They blitzed us a lot, and they did a real nice job on our receivers. They were aggressive, and, you know, we tried to get them deep, and we couldn't get them deep. They, they you took some hard hits out there tonight, but you uh, you bounced back pretty hard. Uh, how was Kettering How was Kettering defensively coming at you? Well, Do they hit you pretty good? or well, That comes along with the blitz, you know. They they blitz and they hit you know you're gonna get hit hit on blitzes you know and uh our line you know did a nice job at adjusting but you know you can't stop eight on seven or all whatever. right final question for you guys because i know you guys got to go uh coming up next week on the clarkson schedule who are you guys playing i'm not even sure troy i athens. troy athens and uh what kind of ball game you guys expect against jd graves who's been a super quarterback well we know they're a good team and uh we'll go back have a good week of practice Come out ready for uh, Troy Athens next week. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Mr. Long, Mr. Fife. You guys did great tonight. And uh, you guys, good luck to you for the rest of your season. Hopefully we see you guys later on. And with that, we're going to have a wrap-up with the Kettering players in a few minutes. Coach Richardson, can I ask you a real quick question? You did a, you guys did a real nice job tonight. You guys came up with a lot of big plays. Uh, it seemed like that second, the second quarter uh, it looked like Kettering after they took the 8-7 lead. I thought they mismanaged the clock, and I think you guys had something to do with it. That, that rush on the punter really surprised them. Well... My hat's off to Kettering. They played a great football game. Uh, you know, physically they took it to us. We had a chance early to put them away, and we didn't do that. And they kept scrapping and scrapping. And they they played a great they football. Came back, game. yeah, they came back to within ten. No, well, one thing about Clarkston, you're always going to get their best. You guys are super. I wish you guys were on our network, but you're not. So we get you once or twice a year when you come and play Mod or Northern or something like that. But good luck to you. And Thank I, you. you guys definitely. That's what winning teams do. They find a way to win. So way to go, Coach. Thank My you. hats off to you and say. Up there in Clarkson. Thanks a lot. What we're going to do, though, with Coach busting off and the players doing the same, we're going to take a little time out. We're going to have the Kettering players in a moment. Let's take third of you back here in a moment. You're watching the Comcast Sports Network. When you need a mortgage, you need answers. That's why so many consumers are relying on Roy Akers at American Mortgage Services for their home financing needs. Smart shoppers know how much they can afford before they shop and then get a firm commitment on it. When you need a mortgage, Roy Akers has the answers to your questions. For fast, dependable service from a trained professional, call Roy Akers toll-free today at 1-888-265-7500. Evening and weekend hours are available for your convenience. Well, we're supposed to have the captains here on our wrap-up right now, Coach Barry and some of the captain players that we're going to have out here. I, this loss was pretty tough on them. The Clarkston Wolves, they improved their record to an undefeated 5-0. and all. They can't hurt their place in the state rankings, depending on how play turns out tonight. The captains are now 1-4, and four, and they will go play on the road next week to Birmingham Seaholm to Doug Frazier's troops, and they're a good football team, but they're struggling. One of the things that I think we can see, uh, as it looks like we won't have the captains out here, just to let you know, Divisions 1 and 2 in the Mighty Oak are absolutely brutal on everybody. Some of the teams that are involved in, in Division 1, such as the Rochesters, the Rochester Adams, you got Troy, you got uh, also Clarkston. These teams are just beating each other up, and these, these teams are taking losses they wouldn't have if they didn't play such studly teams out there. Same thing in Division Two. The captains are out there with Berkeley, Royal Oak Kimball, Pontiac Northern. There's just no breathing room out there, and so these teams are getting beat up. But the captains have a fine squad, and unfortunately, uh, in these crossover games, they're playing one of the better teams in the state, and they just happen to be uh, right here in their own league. For Bob Montgomery, for myself, Roy Akers, for Steve Campbell, for Matt Latham directing in the truck, all our student volunteers, we'd like to thank everyone for staying tuned. We're going to have week six action next. That'll happen next week. We're going to have Waterford Mott versus uh, Pontiac Northern. 
What a game. And we're looking forward to seeing you out there once again. For Roy Akers and everybody else in Comcast land, good night, everybody.